Okay. Okay. Uh, as we indicated, one of our first orders of business, and Mr. Evans has just arrived, thank goodness. Pardon me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to be here about three or four minutes. I want to do two things. I want to let you guys elect your own chairperson, and then secondly, I want you to, you can see we're all set up here with some things that OIT and GIS has put together just to show you what their capabilities are and how they can manage this, manipulate this, iterate this, give you any result or of alternative that you want to try. And they've actually used some real data. I want to assure you that nobody except Brian Robertson, uh, Barb Receivers and uh, Mike Curtis have any knowledge about what they've even prepared. So uh, they just have sort of arbitrarily based on their previous experience and all three of them were here last go around when we did all this. So. They're professional, they know how to move boundaries as you so choose to ask them to do. So they're at your will to use them as you need and expect them to do whatever you think is necessary to make this appropriate for you. So in any event, after we elect the chairperson, I'd like you to let Brian introduce his people and y'all just sort of go through this. This will give you a flavor of what your tools are and how you can use those tools if you so choose. Okay, now, that being the case, uh, the floor is open for nominations for chairperson. Mr. Jeff Jordan. Now, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that very much. Um, if, if I get a second to this nomination, I'll, I'll speak to it. I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Steve Salmon as, uh, as chairman of this committee for the till January 1. Second. I'll second that. All right, second from Mr. Evans. Other I, nominations? I move nominations cease and we'll let they come by acclamation. Do we have a second to that? I'll second that too. Okay. We have a second to that. That being the case, any other, no other discussion pending here then. All of you in favor of uh, nomination ceasing and we're electing Mr. Sandling by acclamation, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Well, we're starting off with a unanimous consent. Oh, that's so, nice. that's and, good. And good luck. That's and, that's so, good. and I didn't have to speak to anything, so that, that's good. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> no, that's good. I wanted to second you. That's all right. I want you to know that, I mean, some have already said that maybe this room is not large enough and you'd like to do it somewhere else. I mean, there may be some advantages in here in that you can see what's written on the screen when they put up numbers. When you get in the other room, maybe you couldn't. That's your choice. We're here to serve you and your needs. And if you want to move, you just let us know. But you are live on television right now. So uh, we wish you the best. And just please let us know if there's anything that you need. I'm sure you'll communicate to us and we'll try to help you in any way we possibly can. So the mayor's not going to be interfering with your discussions and your deliberations. So I just wish you the best and let us know if we can help you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. All right. Well, thank you, and ladies and nice gentlemen. Appreciate it. Mayor, you're welcome back anytime. No, we want Mr. McAdoo now. We don't want to get up here. That's right. That's right. Commissioner yeah, McAdoo, yeah, come I'll on in back. right there. I'll come on up. in the back of many times. Well, we're actually, I'm going to get ready to do a presentation I first. Brian, I'm going to kind of where Brian go. Come yeah, on right up here. and and uh, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you show us. Oh, we're going to let the vice chair. Okay. Let's uh, let's open up the floor for vice chairman then. Uh, yes, we nominate Nicole Lester. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other nominations? All those in favor of Ms. Nicole Lester, signify by saying aye. Aye. All that oppose? All right. Ms. Lester, vice chairman. Great. All right. And you're going to be our secretary, Ms. Becky Shelton, here. So, uh, all right, now, Brian, I think we're ready. All right, all right Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, Vice all Chairman. Right. All right, we, even though we're uh, airing tonight, we want to be kind of informal and have this be a work, sort of a work session. Uh, we want to relate to you what we've been doing since we began this process, which in many respects began in 2005. Uh, when census preparations began for the 2010 census, uh, we, in conjunction with the planning department, were the uh, appointed local liaisons to work with the Census Bureau. And so uh, we had early success in having our new streets match, uh, match with the census data, and so the accuracy right out of the chute uh, was, destined to be, was destined to be good. Uh, during the interim period of time in the last couple of years, our uh, interest in the redistricting process itself has heightened. We've uh, met with the Election Commission about a dozen times. Uh, 
uh, with, uh, I suppose, about three administrators and, uh, and staff has been there for continuity throughout the process. It's gone extremely well. We want to make sure that we can move data easily back and forth between the geographic data that you all are working with and the Election Commission's voter data. And so they've been very good to work with. Ms. Nicole is up to speed on that. Uh, we've even met with her a couple of times, so that's going very well. Uh, our goals leading up to tonight were to provide extremely accurate spatial data. This is definitely a spatial thing, not, not special, mispronounced, it's spatial. Uh, and to objectively provide redistricting technical support to this committee, as, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, we've been able to do this by no intervention uh, by anyone, and you can uh, you'll see the, what we've been working on as we have gone along through the process. We will provide an interactive website that will allow you guys, instead of us giving you a ream of paper tonight, uh, you're going to go home with a, a login uh, to be able to get into a website where all these documents that you're even seeing tonight will be presented. We do have re redistricting books printed for you that have instructions in the back for that. And so uh, those, those were our goals, and, and so hopefully that's what we're going to achieve here. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Barbara Siever. She's our GIS manager, and she's, uh, she's going to uh, tell you a little bit more about the background, the good fit with the census data, and training we received, and so forth and so on. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hello. Um, first, I would like to take a little look back at the 2000 uh, redistricting process. GIS was used during that process. I don't know uh, how many was involved, but Mike was involved in that process as well. And uh, there have been several advances in GIS data since then. And it will really help the needs, I believe, of this committee to be able to utilize these advances. Uh, there were some problems with the 2000 census data matching our existing streets data. As Brian had mentioned, the, uh, them accepting our 2010 streets data has allowed that, those changes to not be an issue anymore. So they used our street data to create their street file and their block file. And that's really going to help, especially as we go forward with annexations. Uh, some districts did not meet the criteria for compactness uh, in 2000, and that was due to us following the city limits boundary. Uh, we were looking at some different ways of make, creating these boundaries that will be more beneficial in, in just a few minutes. Uh, I attended a redistricting training given by the Office uh, of Local Government at the state. Uh, Tom Fleming, David Turpak, and Matthew Hill, who is here this evening, Mr. Hill. Uh, is here in a citizen capacity. He showed up today, and it, they were the ones that presided over this training. We covered uh, the local redistricting guide, which Brian is going to hand out to you uh, in your packet. And uh, they distributed and trained us on the redistricting software. So that software uses our existing software that the county currently owns, the CSRI software, and it was used to produce the approaches that you'll see this evening. Uh, a little bit about what some other counties are doing. Metro is using a, uh, has used a solution called District Solve, and they did not use the state software because it wasn't ready when they decided to proceed. They looked at ESRI's solution and decided it was too expensive for them, and they created an in-house mapping application that uh, is a developer uh, program called Flex that they are putting out for the public. Hamilton County is uh, using an ESRI redistricting solution. They are very pleased with that choice and said it was simple to use. We do have a purchasing option for that redistricting choice if we choose, choose not to use the state software. And then Wilson County is using the state software as well. Okay, a little bit about roles and priorities as we look at redistricting as was relayed by the state. The number one goal of apportionment is equal population, one man, one vote. And assuming 21 districts, that's 12,505 per district. Uh, if you look at the graph on the left, this comes directly from the um, redistricting software from the state. It, that's our, how we currently stand. And you can see that those districts, each bar is a different district, and those districts are kind of all over the place in the amount of um, population. We want to get to more something like this, where it looks equal and distributed across the board for each, of each district. The second most important thing that they mentioned was race and ethnicity. Uh, we do not have any majority minority districts, so that's really not an issue for us. Uh, but we do, as we go forward, want to keep an eye on 
the uh, demographic data for these districts as they're created so that we know that we're not creating majority minority districts. So with that, with the race and ethnicity not being an issue since we have no majority minority districts, the, really the next thing to look at for us is compactness. Or is the district a compact district? Is it not a compact district? And here's two examples. One example on the left, you can see this district kind of meanders around, has some little fingers coming out here. It really does not exhibit a compact district uh, for, for us. If you look at the district on the right, it's nice and kind of squared off and rounded. It's got a little wavy in here, but that's following the block boundaries, so that would be a compact district. Uh, contiguous districts, the software manages the issue of contiguity. Uh, so as, we, uh, as you guys go through this process of assigning blocks to different districts, the software will show you when blocks that are unassigned and blocks that are not contiguous with their existing district. So the software is very good about showing us those things. And then pr again, protection of incumbents was another issue. Uh, and the approaches that you're going to see from Mike, so that was very difficult to uh, achieve with uh, some of the approaches that were explored, and you'll see that later on in just a few Question on that. Um, protection of incumbent, well, that way you went through it, did that also take into account road, road board members and uh, school board members? We have an approach that does that as well. So this was basically just the 21 county commission districts then? In some of the approaches, it's just the 21 county com okay. uh, commission districts, and in some of them, it will be <coughs> in one of them in particular. It's got the school board and road board as well. Okay. So, examining the boundaries, um, how do we create boundaries that we can live with for the next 10 years? We had some issues with annexation, with roads changing, uh, and things of that nature. So, we really want to look at natural features as much as possible to create these boundaries because they're not as likely to move. If you follow the river, the river's uh, barring some flooding, <laughs> it's not going to move very much. So following those natural features, it will really help us uh, keep some continuity between the next 10 years until redistricting occurs again. Uh, that being said, there are boundaries in some of our approaches that look as if they would not meet some of the state standards for compactness. You can see this one right here, it looks kind of like it's all over the place, but it's actually following the river boundary and those blocks are following the river boundary. So as those blocks are using the river as a boundary, we are using the river as a boundary as well. Uh, the boundaries are due to geographical physical issues such as lakes or rivers, and they, like I said, they follow the block boundaries. Many of these issues are data chasms where there's little if any population that exists in those bordering uh, blocks. Uh, several of these right here have a zero population in them. One over here has a five. So as such, these boundaries wouldn't meet the criteria for compactness. Uh, the 10% standard. Total variance for the entire county cannot exceed 10% or 5% for each district. So the 10% standard was emphasized by the state as the guideline for overall acceptance. Uh, but once you get to 10%, you don't have to go any lower. The additional data manipulation is not required to go lower than that 10% threshold. So you just got to hit that 10% threshold. And we want to look at respect for communities of interest. We want to look at places like Glass Cassis and Walter Hill and Christiana and try to keep those within uh, there in a single district and try to respect those. Uh, two real important things I wanted to point out. The county legislative body may increase or decrease the number of districts when reapportionments uh, occur. The decision is usually completed prior to drawing the new district boundaries, so that's usually a decision you make up front. And in the Shaw versus Reno decision, Reapportionment is one area in which appearances do matter. It matters what it looks like. So as we look at this compactness, the Supreme Court says it does, does matter, that how it looks does matter. So it, in your uh, redistricting guide, if you'll just make a note of sections, uh, pages 29 through 32 in the local redistricting guide, there are lots of uh, frequently asked questions there, uh, such as how many commissioners, what's the most commissioners you can have in a district, which is 25, uh, how many can you have per district? The maximum is three. Uh, those are very important things to look at. The date for redistricting is j uh, January 1st, so we have to have everything turned in by January 1st. Uh, but a couple things I pulled out of there was, can a county have one commissioner in some districts and multiple commissioners in the other? And the answer is yes, as long as the county's total of 25 commissioners is not exceeded. And the other one is, can one commissioner represent more than one district? And the answer is no. Every commissioner must reside in the district he or she is elected to. 
So where to start? Well, several of these things we've already accomplished. We've created a, a redistricting committee. We've collected the data. Now it's time to evaluate current districts with the 2010 population data. Uh, there still needs to be a decision if the number of districts and commissioners will remain the same. And then examine the population of each commission district is currently drawn. You'll see a map from uh, Mike this evening that will show that population information. And most of you, I think, have already seen that map. Determine if the plan adheres to the 10% standard. Well, as it stands right now, we're at 69% variance, which does not adhere to the standard. And then ex examine existing majority minority districts, which we do not have any of. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Brian. Okay, thanks to Barbara, who's really overseeing the process throughout. Uh, we're also really, I think, uniquely fortunate to have Mike Curtis uh, still present with the county. He was in the planning department in in 2000 and advised the election commission uh, directly at that time, uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm sure recalls, and that process went very well. Mike is now in uh, GIS and, uh, uh, and as a uh, GIS analyst for us, so it's quite a natural fit for him to be involved in this uh, capacity once again, so we appreciate Mike still being on board. So, um, as Barbara kind of indicated, we've sort of become fans of this uh, uh, state-provided uh, priority or philosophies it kind of makes sense when you look at it uh, from uh, you know the view from 30,000 feet so to speak <laughs> we kind of buy into it um, uh, what what we'd like to show you next and I hope you'll let us just kind of roll through these this is not supposed to be uh, sufficient time for you all to analyze these we just want to uh, lay out nine approaches which we have devised that are nine different ways of doing this these, none of these are recommendations by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, uh, you'll see two or three of them are, are not even a good idea. Uh, we're just doing it for, I guess, illustrative or kind of as an academic exercise. You'll see that when we prioritize certain single factors uh, and ignore other factors, certain things happen. So you'll begin to kind of see uh, as we work through these uh, what, how, that, how that falls out. Uh, so, believe it or not, this is not an exact science as much as you would like for it to be, and, and uh, we, we could go through these same nine approaches tomorrow and come up with slightly different results. Now, the good news is it is exact as to what you've selected once you've, once you've blocked it in, but there's lots of different ways to, to go about this, and that's where the creative expertise of Mike and Barbara uh, come in. So, again, I hope you'll let Mike roll, kind of roll through these rapidly, and then we can come back and readdress those uh, as we uh, begin to close our portion. Thank any, you, sir. Any questions for these folks before we get started anymore? Anything else on any information that they've gone through so far? I had just a couple questions. Um, yes, Brian, yes, in our setting our, like right now we have 21 districts. Uh, that's something we need to do right up front, I assume, uh, as far as, and I don't know if we want us have 25 districts or if we want to have 10 districts but uh, you know I would say right off the bat we probably want to keep it 21 districts so there's a few things that we need to do and we'll probably do those first thing next meeting I guess and kind of get through this information is that what you're thinking no, that we I think that's the natural get progression. all the information right now in this meeting here and then start um, evaluating it and going through it and then step by step that, that makes sense uh, commissioner that, that makes good sense yeah if you guys would be able to in the uh, uh, in a less uh, uh, rushed environment, be able to check out what we're talking about, turn layers on and off, manipulate things around, and uh, and to see, begin to see the impact. So we, 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 we didn't, yes, answer your question. Our intention was not to give you something that you could act on in any way tonight. And, and our deadline is January the 1st uh, committee, where um, that's January 1st done through the full commission level, as far as approved handing it to the state at that point. And the precincts, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I guess that would uh, how many districts we have would be sent to us by the county commission, rather than that wouldn't be our decision, I don't think. And when we were talking about incumbents a while ago and protecting their territory, it would also be nice if maybe we could send out a memo, and if any elected official is not going to run and would not mind sharing that information with this committee, it would certainly help us in this process. That's true. That's true. So Couple. am I correct in that they still have to live in that district for the remainder of the three years, right? That's true. 
So we still have to make sure we draw them within their district. But if, if they're not going to run, we wouldn't have that problem. Well, they would still have to reside in that district for the remaining of their term or, or not? I, if my understanding is correct, the, if the district changes, they can still reside where they live. That's right. If the election comes back around, they would have to live. The, the main thing is we could el eliminate it from consideration as something to work around. That's right. That's, that's okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're 21, you're, you're nine plans, we'll call them, assume 21 districts. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm assuming that um, since the steering committee and then it was approved through the commission to set up our committee for to do the redistricting process, that we would have the decision to keep it at 21 or 25 or less, or, or do we, is that a, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming we don't have to vote on that as a full commission because we set up a committee to just make those decisions for us, right? Well, we could through this committee, I think. I think it's just a, a basically a communication part of uh, letting the commission know that, you know, we're keeping it at 21 or if there was any other uh, submittals or any other well, alternatives yeah. or anything. But basically, this committee is resetting the district lines and, and redoing the the, the districts all together as far as I Well, ultimately, the county commission has to approve yeah, everything we do at the end of the day, right? That's true. But if we were to make a decision to go to 25 districts or 19 districts or change that, right. that'd just be a part of our laying out the process, yeah. wouldn't it? And then we present that as a total package to them, and then they, they and might ultimately vote, turn it, on vote, it, up, vote it up or vote it down. Yes. Right. But when we present it to them, are they going to be able to vote on pieces of it or make... Uh, or is it going to be an up or down vote whenever we get it to them? I understand that it's 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 a package given to the full commission as a whole, correct? And then they're if they want to break it out and start doing lines, then they they're untangling this right everything that we've done here. Right. But so uh, we're hoping that that the commission and other elected officials and and the community will come in and have input as far as as we're going through this process. But we're not going to tarry very long, basically. In December, we're going to wind this thing up and have it presented to the full commission, hopefully, in our December meeting, which is around the second week in December. So that cuts our time frame pretty short. But I think what uh, GIS is uh, allowing us to or bringing forth to us, I don't think it's going to take that long of a process, well, to tell you the truth. Okay, about a few days until December, and present it to the full board of commissioners, and they turn it down. Yeah. yeah, could be a problem. Yeah, if we can get it early. So we need to get it to them a lot earlier. And if, you, if sure. you don't change the districts from 21, then I don't think there's going to be a question with the full commission. But if you change it to 23 or 17 or whatever, that part better yeah. find out yeah. quick. <laughs> you know, I think. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. So to me, that's one of those things you put up at the front is. Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. what the, they said, they, there were several things well, that before have been we listed. get too bogged down, unless we have some direct questions for those folks who just uh, gave us their input, then we will uh, get with Mike. Yes, sir. I just want to uh, just reiterate that uh, you're required uh, to report to the full commission every time the full commission meets. So, whatever we have done up until the night before the next commission meets, uh, uh, You'll be reporting that, and I can, as we all yes. well know, input will then start immediately. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> maybe good, a, maybe bad. We can give the commission a play-by-play play of what we have up to exactly. that, to that, yes, that far. And, and if we need some more input from any other commissioner, of course, they're always welcome. So. And Steve, I don't know if we need any any input from legal counsel or not, but I would like a, a definitive answer on what Jimmy's question was. Can, will the commission, when they get the vote, is it a up or down, or are they going to tweak? Because it's my understanding that when it gets to the state level, they can still tweak. We're all just still making a recommendation. And so I really want to know, you know, how, how much tweaking are we talking about, you know? Sure. And that may, affect, that may affect the amount of information you give them each month to make sure that nobody gets caught off guard on a direction we're heading in. Right. Because I don't want us to get into a debate on the floor of trying to rewrite it in the commission meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to the floor, 21 commissioners, every one of them get up there and ask for a change to be made, and if the majority of them votes for it, it be made. Mr. Robertson had something to add. Yeah. Uh, 
Commissioner Allen's point, uh, the state training did say that one of the parties you might want to uh, consider involving would be the, your legal staff. So that's, that's very common. They sit on these, or, or that they advise these committees. Okay. Anything else? Mike? Yes, sir. Where we are today, I'm going to show you a little bit of software here. This is what we call in the GIS community a heat map. Um, and basically what it is is we took the 2000 data and did a point density. Uh, the more points you had in the area, the more color you have beyond the green. It goes from green to yellow to red. So in 2000, you can see where the densities are, the populations in Rutherford County. You have uh, the central core of Murfreesboro, some people out in the Case and Lane area, and then you got your Smyrna area, and then a little bit in Laverne. If we go to the 2010 data, you can see the difference here. I'm just going to flip back and forth a couple times. 2000, 2010, 2000, 2010. You've got a shift to the north here in Murfreesboro of the population. You've got much more people in the Case and Lane area, more in the Barfield area, and a very large influx of people in the Laverne area and also out in this Laverne Smyrna area. So if you if you've seen the maps that have been out there, you will be able to tell that where this comes from. Um, oh, my map is gone. Okay. Let's talk about our population, and then we'll go to that map. April 1st, 2010, the decennial census was performed in Rutherford County. We returned 262,604 people. In 2000, we had 182,023. That's a 44% increase in 10 years. Approximately 8,668 persons per commission district were needed in 2000. A plus or minus 5% yielded a 8,235 to 9,101 range. Assuming 21 districts, this time around, you will have approximately 12,505 persons per district. A plus or minus 5% will yield a 11,880 to 13,130 range. I believe all of you are familiar with this map. I think I see several on the table. Um, to explain part of what it is, is all the dark areas are areas of large variances of population change, either plus or minus. These are all places where sometimes drastic amounts of population is going to have to be moved from one district to another. Uh, they are widely separated. They are, uh, like this minus 34% out here is separated by, you know, just a, a minus 3% here, which is almost close to perfect, um, and a minus 30% here. You've got a lot of minuses here and a lot of pluses over here. What's going to happen? That's what you need to decide. That's, that's what we're going to try to help you with. Better do more than try. <laughs> Let's talk about a census block. Um, a census block is the smallest geographic unit used by the United States Census Bureau. This is going to be something that you're going to get heard ad nauseum, is a, is a block. Move this block here, move this block there, you're going to see a lot of it. And it's um, used by the Census Bureau for tabulation of 100% data, data collected from all houses rather than a sample of houses. And several blocks make up block groups, which again make up census tracts. A block is used to show what the total population and other statistics that is specific about that geographic unit. And by geographic unit, it's separated by streets, uh, power lines, streams, other things like that. That's how the blocks are created. They're something that's readily identifiable. And <clears throat> within those statistics that are in there are population figures such as race, ethnicity, um, what population is above the age of 18, male, female, all that information. 
This allows us to move population from one district to another to meet the 10% total variance requirements. A little bit about the census blocks we have in Rutherford County. There are 4,926 blocks in Rutherford County. They vary from zero population to 1,677 persons per block. This is an average of 54, 53 persons per block. Of those uh, almost 5,000 blocks, 1,324 have more than 53 persons. 3,602 have equal to or less than 53 persons. Of that 3,602, 1,570 have zero persons. And what does this mean to us in our process? We have blocks that vary from zero to 1,677, which is a very large number. Um, that's more than one-tenth of the value that you need to have for, for a commission district if you use 21 districts. The zeros are scattered everywhere, and um, you can readily move them around to, to make a, um, a district more less compact, or more compact, I should say, and make it look more uniform. So uh, there are various things we can do with it. You'll get used to it as we go along. Can we ask, are these blocks do, for example, do any of them occur in Percy Priest or, 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 or let's say the uh, Smyrna Airport on the basis? Yes, yes, yes indeed, okay. yes, indeed. Um, lakes are blocks and um, obviously no people live in the lake. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think we have any mermaids in Rutherford County. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of the redistricting software that we're going to be using. This is something that the state developed that's based on the GIS software that we currently use here in Rutherford County. I have created four fictional districts that are in the center of Murfreesboro just for demonstration purposes only. Please do not think of them as anything else. But this is using the real data that we will have available to us. Um, say we want to make the boundary between District 2 and District 1 a little bit less odd. So we want to make it kind of even through here. And we want to move these five blocks from District 2 to just District 1. Well, we're going to choose a source of District 1. We're going to make a target of District 2. We're going to select the tool here. We're going to draw a little box. It's going to highlight it. Over here, we're going to see that we're moving 200 population from District 1 to District 2. And we figured out that that's what we want to do. We hit here and we commit change. It's easy as that. Uh, we can take whole blocks at a time. We can take individual blocks. We can select odd number of blocks. You can do anything you want with this as you wish. Um, for those that worked with me in 2000 on this, um, I believe Mr. Taylor and Mr. Jernigan were associated with this. But it's the same basic process we use then. It's just a little bit easier to use. <laughs> okay, we'll have an overview of the approaches that we looked at. Again, um, as Brian said, please, these are not recommendations. These are just academic um, explorations of the possibilities that are out there. Uh, we had two different ways of doing it, either from scratch or from existing districts. And within those, we had different subsets, uh, geographic, which followed certain, uh, certain order around the county, like clockwise or counterclockwise, or starting in a particular feature or area, such as the lake, or from a particular area, such as, say, the northwest area of Murfreesboro. Um, a statistical method, uh, moving from the area of highest variance to the lowest, or a mixed combination of both. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. These are all available on the website that you will have available to you at the end of the, um, when you go home and, and look them up. That way you can study them in detail on how, what we did and what we looked at. CC1, by the way, they, they are all categorized by this three digit, two or three digit classification. That's just an internal code we used. This one, County Commission 1. Um, start from scratch. Um, we did not look at the incumbency, but we did look at compactness. And if you look around here, this was uh, just a, where we looked at some of these districts. Some of them became a little elongated. Um, others, uh, 
such as um, District 11 and District 12 kind of turned around sideways. Yeah, again, you can see how things can, can move around. CC2, this one was started from scratch but followed historic districts. Um, compactness was looked at here. Um, you will look again, um, District 1 has become much smaller because of the increased population in this area. Uh, District 5 is here. Um, I think 2 and 3 have kind of become split up a little bit. It, again, it's just a, a different way of looking at it. We fought, tried to follow the historic districts. Um, and um, I'm trying to think of what else it was. Anyways, we'll go on. I've got details on this on the website. CC3 was another start from scratch. Incumbency was looked at and um, compactness was attempted. It was not achieved because of the incumbency. Uh, one thing I'd like to point, point out here on this, get the pointer working here. Um, we have a county commissioner here. We have one here and we have another one right here. Um, they're within a mile or two of each other, real close, and yet you have to try to keep them in their separate districts and still keep their population at the plus or minus five variance. You also have some up here in Smyrna and Laverne that are basically the same way. This is some, some, something you're going to have to think, uh, think about and look at and take into consideration. This one was a start from scratch, and this was um, what I call the Uber incumbency. This included all of the county commission plus all of the road board and also all of the school board residences. And um, as far as the road board and school board, we followed their historic um, commission district assignments. You know, like school board one is assigned to districts X, Y, and Z, right. and two is, you know, and so on. We kept them all within that same grouping. As long as they fell within one of those three commission districts, we considered them in their incumbent area. Uh, if you look at this, this district right through here, is the meandering one we showed you earlier in the example. To keep people within their districts, we had to do this. Um, 13 also meanders a little bit. Seven has a very close neck here, and it almost, almost becomes um, incongruent. Um, has an area of the points down here, 21 points out this way. But I can go on and on showing you examples of where there are areas in here that are not compact, but yet we still maintained incumbency. It was very difficult. I spent several days on that one. M1, this is a start from scratch. Um, incumbency was not attempted. Uh, compactness was attempted and achieved. Uh, this one started up here in the lake and worked around in a counterclockwise fashion into the center of Murfreesboro. You will notice this looks like it's not compact, but like we discussed earlier, it's following one road, another road, and a river. So it follows good geographic boundaries and would be considered compact in that area. It's compact if it's not, uh, not a lot of numbers in that. Well, like it's not, it's not, or whatever. It's not know. snaking out to pick up a couple blocks yeah across a geographic boundary it is basically what they're looking for so it doesn't do that type of thing. Were roadways also used in this major yes, sir, roadway extensive, system? Extensively, yes sir. Mm -hmm. All right, what about, I, not to interrupt you, but incumbency is one major thing, but also uh, precincts. It's, we, we've uh, got one to talk about that okay. here in a minute. Okay. Nice thing about actual precincts themselves mm -hmm. is you can adjust those. It's the, the voting locations themselves that can be difficult. Miss Lester's over there nodding her head. Yeah. <laughs> the the yeah. precincts will be adjusted after the district lines are drawn, and the precincts will be adjusted by the election commission solely. Well, more or less, and I said precincts, but voting locations is what I really Yeah, mean. we need to yeah. differentiate yeah. between the two. Yeah. We've got some voting locations now outside of districts that shouldn't be. We, we don't want to do that. We want to make sure all of our voting locations are within the district that it's in. So we're going to have to do some work on yeah, that. Yeah, that, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's that's something that Miss Lester I think would help you with. <laughs> we start with an existing districts in BP one. Uh, incumbency was um, not looked at, compactness was attempted, it was not achieved uh, because concentration was on popul population balance. Uh, moved from um, high areas to low areas and created some very interesting um, combinations here in the center of Murfreesboro and up in the, uh, the Smyrna and Laverne area. MP1. This started with the current districts, uh, incumbency was considered, compactness was, attempt, was not attempted, and the concentration on population balance. This was starting with the existing commission districts and adjusting them from there and, and adjusting them down to where they met the requirements of the plus or minus 5%. MP2, incumbent, incumbency was attempted and achieved, compactness was attempted and not achieved to keep the incumbents in their districts. If you look here, we were able to keep 18 and, 19, 18 and 21 somewhat compact in this case, but if you look at 19, it moves all through this area here, and that is definitely not compact. P1, this is the existing polling places within their commission districts. There was no other considerations other than plus minus 5%. This was, again, uh, an academic exercise just to see what would happen. And it, an example of why it was very difficult to do is if you look at District 13 here, look how it, wow. uh, that is definitely not compact. Um, and 14, 15 are, are spread out. So, and you look at 10 up here, it's almost cut off between 9 and 5. So, and an overview of the approaches, this is all going to be on the website uh, it's just to show you what we are looking at. This is all detailed information is about what method it was done, uh, what the deviations are. If you'll notice, all of these deviations between all the plans or the approaches we had were all less than 10 percent. And those are available on the data sharing via SharePoint. If you look in your packet, towards the back of your packet, um, there is a website for you to log into. And if you would please help us fill that, to finish that out, I'm going to hand around this sheet. It's got your name on it, and it's got a place for you to put your email and your phone number for our information for this website so we can get you a login that will work for it. If you would just please fill it out and get it back to me, I would appreciate it. Comparing. Ten years ago, when the districts were set, what was finally set, the compactness, uh, it, looking at it, it doesn't seem that it was that compact ten years ago. It was not, because they followed the city limits last time. Okay. And the city limits changed, oh, and the city limits are not compact. Okay. Um, well, so most of these were more compact than the one ten years ago, the way the results were. Most of the ones you just you, showed us. You could say that, yes, sir. Um, the address is there. It's also in your book. Um, it also is available from the county commissioner's website page. Um, this will be the place to find all documents and maps relevant to this process. It is a publicly available site, but for read only for the public. They can go there. They can look at everything you're looking at. Uh, we are creating logins for the members of the committee, so you so you got the information sheet I'm handing around. And again, there are instructions on how to use this site in the back of your pa packet. <coughs> And to show you what this website looks like, that is what you're going to see when you're done. Email and phone. Brian? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, we're pretty much handing things back over to you. We, we don't intend to do anything that we're not asked to do. Uh, 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 we're uh, doing nothing. We're handing over to you now. Uh, handoff is completed. Mr. Curtis will be glad to be present at any subsequent meetings. Uh, Barbara, myself as well. Appreciate it very much, Brian and uh, Barbara. Mike, thank you very much. We're going to lean on y'all very heavily, I might say, because uh, we're yeah. going to need your help through this whole process very much. So, to to make our uh, county a uh, a redistrict great place. <laughs> um, a couple of things before we get uh, too 
too far in here, we're, we're probably going to call it a little short tonight, but uh, meeting time on a couple people, including myself, Monday nights uh, seem to be a problem. Uh, we've got some county commission stuff that will be coming in, you know, the first of every month, you know, on some Mondays and Tuesdays and there's some Thursdays and all this sort of stuff. I wanted to throw out um, a t what other time frame works for everybody. We've got some We've got some ball games, and I know some kids, some some folks here have kids that's playing ball, including myself. And uh, we'll adjust to however we adjust. But uh, uh, what a Wednesday afternoon, uh, still at five or five thirty, be good on. Uh, and let's do a, a couple hours. Uh, try to. We found out. We we found out before. Um, over two hours, you're you, you kind of get start getting numb so uh, if we can keep the meetings to about a, a couple hours I think would be uh, plentiful if we need to do a couple of nights a, a week then we can uh, we can do that as well but just kind of throw it out there for observation and, and as well as conversation what do y'all feel about date and time and, and how long we meet the quicker we get done the quicker we have a redistrict county well, uh, Wednesday evenings, obviously, um, you have to take into consideration church, church obligations. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, I, the reason I said Wednesday night is because uh, we have some county commission meetings here in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven county commissioners that uh, uh, well, are going to be not, doing some meetings. Would it be but possible just to um, set it each time we come? I mean, I know it's not as convenient, but not as easy, especially if we're letting the public know. We'll have to have a legal notice. Yeah, we really want to kind of get into a, a set pattern uh, on some on some nights because uh, and we do have a little bit of conflicts I think on different committees as far as Monday night meetings coming back up uh, then the next month and then Tuesday nights as well as Thursday nights. So. But there's also Mondays we got. Mondays different ones. We got steering and uh, safety and planning commission and yeah. public safety. <laughs> That's we got Friday, Saturday also, you know. So uh, I do a Saturday afternoon. I will be here on Friday. Okay, Friday. Saturday church. Could could we do this? Uh, kind of combine what Commissioner Phillips said and others. Uh, decide right now on our next meeting mm -hmm. and at the next meeting come up with a consistent plan we can all look at our schedules and our commission and our we can, committee meetings yes okay we look at the next 60 days and, and see which meetings fall where we don't have any meetings on the 22nd do we next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Next Monday. no next monday but it's in the morning it's in the morning yeah, in the morning. yeah. yeah. Public safety. Who's on public safety? Yeah. Tiffany and I. Y'all two are on public safety. Well, well, how early can somebody come on Wednesday? And if we can get it early enough, then you get still plenty of time. We, like you said, two hours is about going to do you in. Is five too early on uh, Wednesdays? I can be here at five. It's a good time for me. We'll come out for our next meeting, and, we'll, for our next and, the, meeting. and then we can discuss it. Well, actually, point. our next meeting, we'll, we could do the 22nd, because we've got that early on uh, planning. Nobody else is, has a conflict there. Did and then we'll, we'll go through and look. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm moving with me on Wednesday or We can even go to 4.30 if somebody, if they can, if they can make right. it. Can y'all meet at any time? Yes, we've been aired most of the time. We have very few conflicts at that point. Okay. I'm moving to meet Wednesday at 5 o'clock. We've got a motion on Wednesday at 5 o'clock, and that's the 24th. I'll second it. Second it, motion. That gives us enough time back in. Any other comments, discussion? What about notice? Seven days, four days. We're okay. Tomorrow, it's got to be and in the meantime, <laughs> folks, we will 
check these schedules and meeting time frames and see if we can have another alternative instead of Wednesday night, okay? And will you check so, with the um, county attorney's office and see if they can have somebody sit in? Yes. I've already got that note. The 24th at 5. This room? This room right here? What do y'all feel about? Well, let's get the, we got the motion on the floor for this right here on the 24th at 5. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the 24th at 5 will be our next meeting. And like I said, we're going to try to stay in a two-hour time frame. If it's less, great. If it's, uh, if it's more, we're going to try to start winding it down about that time frame, okay? And um, your next question, sir, was what? What would you say? I, I did. I, oh, I was just standing in this, in this room. I, yes, sir, in this room. What did y'all... I mean, our, our crowd tonight is okay. We're a, we're one big happy family here. We're kind of feeling a little comfortable here, but uh, uh, the mayor did was correct as far as the PowerPoint there. It might be a little distant for us to, to really see unless you've got handouts or something. It might be difficult for our our guests coming to see that, you know, how far they're back. So... Um, Y'all want to try to keep attempting it here, in this room? I think you really need to make that decision based on the crowd, because as we get closer to finalizing it, we may have to move it over there. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I don't think you want to wrong. Mr. Chairman, our next okay. meeting. Uh, well, I, I'd entertain a motion, then we keep it in this room, and until later on, we will. Uh, so move. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, see five, saying aye. 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 All that oppose, okay, we will meet right here. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, on our next meeting, um, the layout of the things that we have to do step-by-step -step process uh, that, that he showed us just a minute ago, is that what we're going to focus on in our next meeting? Yes, sir. Uh, matter of fact, we've got uh, uh, to start on a number of things, whether we're going clockwise or counterclockwise or what district, and I think Mike did a... Uh, a pretty good job yeah, of saying yeah. where we mm -hmm. might start. We're going to look at the information that they've given us and um, and start from there, basically. I mean, just jump in head first, I guess. So, so uh, Chairman, will we have a uh, an agenda each night so that we can stay on course, or, or are we just going to be pulling out of our head? I'm well, curious. That, if we can make an agenda, I think uh, we would definitely want to. Um, but as of right now, we're basically just going to have legal staff here, and uh, uh, we're going to look at what we've got online and start in from there. Any other suggestion there, Brian, on what, uh, as far as a starting point? I know once we get the ball rolling, we're, we're going to be okay. And, uh, it would be good if perhaps you could early on decide how many districts you'd like to have, because uh, it occurs to me that we'll have to do multiple sets of maps for every number that you come up with. If you, for instance, said you would like to see a set with it as 7 and a set with it as 11 and a okay. set at 17, we would have to do a complete set for every one, every one of those that are, you know, permutations, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, is that something we can do tonight? I was going to say, I don't want to put anybody on the spot as far as decisions tonight, but, you know, we might could handle that district, uh, number of districts tonight. I don't know. I'll make a motion a second. We have a motion to keep it 21 and a second. Discussion. Um, discussion, definitely discussion. I, I believe we need to, uh, we need to I believe we down. need to ask the uh, county attorney who's responsible for setting the number of districts, if we even have that authority, or if that's not up to the county commissioners to determine that. We, we, we are, uh, I do believe, and we can ask that for sure, but uh, we are, as a committee level, and then once we send the package to the county commission, uh, like I said, we hope they don't undo it and uh, unravel all the hard work that we've done. That's why we're going to make this uh, inviting for everyone as far as comments and suggestions and, and have them to invite it and anyone, any citizen too. But I think it's my opinion, it's up to this committee to, to set the guidelines and to do everything that we want to do as a committee level and then send it to the full committee. We, I have a question. We, let me just add to that, if I may. We can set it providing the legal opinion agrees with it. 
you know, if we can say it's 21. Well, this will start, we Brian, I think, and then if we're looking at 21 districts it, still, whatever then we can start quick. doing the composite of 21 districts and moving on like we've, we have in at least for 21 years since I've been here. So I thought he presented the data based on 21 districts. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. 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 And I thought we were going to have time to get on the system and look at the, the layout of all these options that he presented mm -hmm. before we make a final decision of, of 21 or whatever. That's That was my understanding, that we were going to do a little homework yeah. before we make a decision. That's part of vote tonight. That's actually part of my question, decision. which is if we decide on twenty one tonight, are we locked in now and forever more to twenty one or if as we go through the process we discover that a different number might be better suited, <coughs> do we have the flexibility then to change that number? Or are we are, I, I just want to understand for, with this group, are we setting off with twenty one just to simplify the process because that's what we're at now? Or are we just saying yeah, it's twenty one and that's it? I think we can, as a committee, undo anything that we okay. want to undo whenever we have to undo it. We back ourselves into a corner and, I, and, I'm just thinking and like, see later um, on that, yeah. that 21 is not going to work. Uh, it really needs to be 10 or it really needs to be 25. Mm -hmm. Then we we can do that as a committee and redo that. But then, then why don't we cross tonight? that bridge when we get there? Well, are we, you, we, know, you might want to vote no because we yeah. have a motion and a second on there unless yeah. they want to withdraw that. Uh, that's the discussion right now that we have is the motion of keeping it 21 uh, well, districts and we do it, have a second on that so as long as I'm clear that we're just voting for the purposes of moving forward and modeling the numbers that we're looking at the, that that's what we're voting on is just to keep it as is for today to simplify the discussion then I'm fine voting yes I'll go with, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, question though about who sets the uh, amount of road board members and school board members uh, and if we change the amount if, if we change the amount of commission districts does it have to be divisible by three no. uh, you know it's so they can they have seven on each of theirs or I don't divisible think by that's seven. part of our that's, that's part of our see. task I don't believe so we, we will check on the uh, the legal staff on that see, as well but I don't think that's part of our task see, on this we're thing. trying to set the number at 21 but you keep telling me that you got to check on this, you got to check on that. No, that's the only thing we're going to check on. We're going to check on legal staff and bring them here next month or next week. And all this stuff. So why can't we set that number next meeting after I look at this data? Like I said, Commissioner, we've got a motion on the floor and a second, and and it's perfectly fine. We're just, we're throwing it up here on the floor, and that's where it's at, and that's why we're having a good discussion on it. So. Well, I think if you don't if set you, it at 21, you're going to have... Uh, how many commissioners here, but you're going to have another 14, 15, 9, eight, so I think we'll be set at 21. Well, is, it, is it, does, legal. it does give uh, Brian and his office okay, some, some work in, yeah, we're headed in the 21 district capability here, I so that's what. That package that's I understand. Everything I, I see tonight is based on 21. I understand. Is, is, the, is the attorney part of the motion to, no. to, to, to seek out the legal opinion? and? That's not what she said. Yep. What, what we got on leave the Leave it 21 districts. That's what we have as a motion. You leave it in 21 districts. You want legal if you opinion, want to amend that. I amend it to get a legal opinion that we got the right to say. That just okay. makes good sense. Okay. Yep. We have an amendment and a second. Any question or discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, I'd entertain a uh, vote by voice vote on the amendment only. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All that opposed? Okay, now we're up to the full motion with the amendment on there. All in favor of the 21 with uh, legal looking into that as the amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the opposed? No. No. We have two no's. Mr. Evans and Mr. McAdoo. <coughs> This, would, okay. this also lets others know where we stand right now to get feedback instead of waiting for two more weeks or a week, a week and a half. That's more. right. It's not in stone, folks, until we say it's in stone. And then, then it's to, not in stone. Say stone. <laughs> and then it's not in stone, I don't think. We send it to the 
the full commission and then they send it to the state. So then it's not done until the state says it's done. So. Um, <laughs> all right. It ain't over time. I think I'm right when I when I say this. If 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 we don't um, if we don't stay at 21, then then we're going to be in a in a situation where we're going to have to redraw, or somebody will have to redraw, the school board and the road board. Uh, it'll because it's got to work in some division of, of <coughs> seven, yeah. and. The only other number that I can think of is 35, and I don't see anybody coming from that. And it's, it certainly should be an odd number of districts because you don't want ties. Um, so, I mean, it seems as if to me that uh, I'm certainly willing, though, to listen to debate on the, on the topic, but it certainly seems to me that 21 is the logical thing to do. One other point I want to make, too. Somebody thought it was logical for 42 at one time. Well, they did. That's <laughs> correct. That, that's exactly right. The metro that one was uh, or 42 commissioners. Now, there were still, 20, there was still 21 districts. 20, there was two commissioners. There's two commissioners. Two, yes. per, and we need to remember, too, and I, I know you're concerned about the precincts, and, 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 and I share that concern with you. But, but let's not forget here that uh, Ms. Lester and her office already, no matter, probably no matter what happens, they're going to have to notify, and we have a record number of voters, do we not? A record number in this county that we've never even touched this before. She's going to have to notify thousands, and that's not an exaggeration, of people that their district has changed. And, and also their voting district, their voting, yes. And to put the further burden on her on the precincts, I think we're going to have to be a little bit flexible on that. And, and I mean, I lived in a precinct a while ago didn't have a place uh, to vote and it was right in the city of Murfreesboro and there wasn't a place at that time at that time that's changed now mm -hmm. so I, I just want to point that just 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 say that if we stay with the same 21 commissioners I'm hoping we stay at the same voting precinct where it'll be easier on them too We're, we are trying to make it easier for our uh, constituents to <coughs> vote and to our public to be registered, <coughs> get registered, and to vote. Well, that should so. be one of uh, the goals of this committee is to have the voting precincts clip close to the same as possible. Yes, sir. Exactly. I totally yeah. agree. I agree with that. You want a little history on voting precincts? Sure. Mine changed every, every <laughs> election. It's changed. It's changed from the wilderness one, two, and three over to the Willitos building and over to Vine Street and the Palace of Park. I, history of it. I understand. <laughs> Mine's been a little bit uh, so, different in the so past. So to say that we're going to come out with a permanent place, it won't happen. We want to increase voter turnout. We want we want people to get out and vote, and uh, to elect these folks uh, in these positions as, uh, nationwide. So I mean that's that's our main thing is to is to get out the vote and make it a uh, good accessible place too you know for for years we've had uh, places that wasn't heated and cooled but you know we've kind of gotten most of them into where it's at least heated or cooled area to go and vote but uh, Jim, anything else Mr. yes Jim, sir um i would just maybe recommend if any committee member wants to to go to the nashville metro government they're done with theirs have been finished for some time it took them I don't know about two and a half three months I think to do this um, of course they consider be large and we are I believe they have 35 commissioners I think and five more that are at large mm -hmm. but they did what mr. Taylor suggested I don't know if it would work here or not they, the next election for commissioners is three years from now and I'm still trying to figure out what football game to go to Friday night. So I, I don't know what I'll do, you know, or if, I doubt if any other commissioner knows three years in advance for sure. But they did ask. You were exactly right. And lo and behold, I don't know when they run down there, but two commissioners said they were not going to run and go ahead and not pay any attention to the district lines. And so they put them in with another commissioner. But since they weren't going to run, it didn't matter. Now, I don't know what we would get. Yeah. But that question well, ought to be asked. Well, you don't know what we get till we ask. That question right. ought to well, be asked. I hope right. we don't follow Davidson, because if you've seen on our night four lines, they had a heck of a problem over there. So it's just sticking with Rutherford. 
Well, well, no, the point that he made, there's no problem with it. I mean, so what, if 21 say they're going to run again or something, fine. If couples say, no, I'm definitely not, then it, it makes the whole process a little easier. You don't have to say anything. And, I mean, they, yeah. they, 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 they don't, don't, really they don't have anything. to share that information. Yeah, that, that's what I would is, is yeah. somebody that's what I listen to contact. I would send a memo out to all the commissioners and school board and as well as road board and ask all the above whether they're planning on running in next and if they would mind sharing that information mm -hmm. yes okay. and if you, one person says well i'm not gonna run it might tweak it somewhat. It, it might okay. it might help to, yeah. and mr robinson is, is back the there nodding yes there. it will help with that line anyway well that income yeah, it might be one of those in his, one of they managed to do it with no, with no problems as far as putting incumbents together at all well, I won't ask for a motion on that. We'll send that out to uh, all the elected officials uh, in a letter, email, whatever we need to send, and uh, and ask for uh, that information. I have one more thing, just yes, while we're on the topic. On page four of the redistricting handbook that they gave us, mm -hmm. um, it says that the, the county legislative body may increase or decrease the number of districts when the reapportionments are made. Here, the statute allows some flexibility to determine the appropriate number of districts within a county. Based on significant population changes or other factors, the county may decide to increase or decrease the number of districts and size of the commission accordingly. This decision is usually completed prior to drawing the new district boundaries. So, so it says the county's legislative body, so I guess whatever recommendation we make. Well, I, we've always gotten yeah. that, that input from the county commission yeah. before we have yeah. begun in the past. Now, whether or not this committee has different authority or not, I'm not sure. All right. All right, anything else? Anything else come before the committee? That's a good point. All right, folks, thank you very much. We will see you uh, the next Wednesday at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. This meeting is adjourned.